for our meditation this morning, uh, let's, let's turn our attention to John chapter 14, from verses 28 to 31. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you will rejoice, because I said, I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Up to 31. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. Thank you. May the Lord add more of his blessings upon the reading of the scriptures. And let us continue to look into God's word this morning as we focus on this uh, passage. We know cross is very familiar to us today. Cross is in fact the symbol of Christianity. Though we don't worship God, cross, but we all have, we know what is the significance of the cross of Jesus Christ. And when you look at the scripture... Jesus talked to his disciples quite often from that perspective of his death. And he says, I'm going to die. We know, you know, as, as we often say that, we don't like people talking about death. If somebody say, I'm going to die or I'll die this week or, you know, we say, no, 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 don't say that, right? Yeah, even if it, if it is our dear ones, if it is our enemy, we'll say, okay, let him die, no problem. Uh, we would probably clap our hands and appreciate that. But if, we, if they are dear to us, we would say that, no, 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 that, please don't even speak about it. You know, sometimes people say that, you know, I'll die in, at the age of 80 or 70. Even then we, you know, uh, rebuke them and say, please do not talk about that. We don't want to hear about death. I know nobody is pleased in that. If, you know, us all of a sudden, uh, on, a, on a, the whole atmosphere will change when someone talking, start talking about death. But look at the discourse of Jesus. When the narratives, gospel narratives, when he talked to his disciples, time and again, especially in the gospel according to John, you see him talking about his, his own death in number of chapters. Chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 8, chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 17, and on and on. Jesus is talking about his death. And that too, very specifically, he gave them a very clear picture about how he is going to die. Let's read that scripture uh, from John chapter 12, verse 32. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. Thank you. If you look at this scripture, Jesus is very specific. He specifically tells them how he is going to die. Or what kind of death he is going to face. And he says, when I am lifted up. When I'm lifted up. That means the disciples expected Jesus to have. It's not a normal death that Jesus is going to face. Rather he speaks to them. He tells them that the son of man will be lifted up. I will be lifted up. And now when you look at the whole picture of the Old Testament and when you read the book of Isaiah chapter 53 we have the whole picture of suffering servant the servant you know in in in, in the whole Isaiah's narrative of very specially uh, i mean starting from chapter 40 onwards and we see uh, in a larger scale the blessings of the people of israel then how that blessing is attained is more clearly drawn in a picture of a suffering servant the messiah the servant of god who will come down to this earth and he will suffer and die 
so he's not going to face a normal death rather he would suffer and die that is what we read in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 so they the, the disciples his own people the, the people who followed him even the Judaistic community during the days of Jesus they had some expectation some understanding from their own scripture which is Old Testament about the death of Jesus but uh, death of the Messiah that he would suffer but here he is more specifically talking to them about how is he going to die and for a normal Jew they will never kill Jews would never kill anybody putting on a cross or lifting up on a cross and kill them no no Jews will never do that what do they do Luke chapter 4 verse 29 Luke 4 29 and rose up and thrust him out of the city and they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built that they might throw him down over the cliff Jews want to kill Jesus they wanted to kill him what is the way of way they follow to how, how do they kill a person they slowly wanted to lead him to the cliff of a rock or a mountain and from they want to push him down they want to push him down this is the more, this is the way, they, th that kind of death for Jews, they are very familiar with. In another scripture, John chapter 8 verse 59, we read that they have take, they took stones to throw at him. When he said, me, I'm, I'm, before Abraham was I, he was trying to talk about his father who is in heaven. And then they, they wanted to, you know, throw stones at him and kill him. Because we know the, they have an Old Testament background. Of throwing stones at sinners and killing them. So never in the history of Judaism. Never in the background of Jewish understanding. That they can lift somebody on a cross and kill. That is not the Jewish way of doing things. But that is a Roman way of killing a person. It was Rome that invented all understanding or it was a Roman way that means even before Jesus crucifixion was introduced before the time of Jesus at least 300 years back even the Greek during the time of uh, you know the uh, the Greek kingdom it was already introduced if you remember any time I have I have said here they basically introduce crucifixion to finish off all the you know old slaves we know that rich people used to buy slaves from the market and they they would work for this master for whole whole their lifetime when they are they they lose their strength they have no strength in themselves they can't do any more work what would they do they wanted to finish these people they wanted to just you know uh, get get away from them therefore they have introduced found out a new way of you know finishing these people in order instead of killing them you know by beating or something of that kind they would lift this person on a cross tie both legs and the and the hands together i mean uh, both leg i mean legs together and the hands and leave it for two three days and that and break the legs and gradually that person die in suffocation on the cross that was the whole point of crucifixion and so and that is taken here to apply to Jesus or they wanted to kill Jesus and we know when 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 Pilate when they gathered around Pilate in front of Pilate and then when they were demanding for Jesus because it was the Romans who had the authority to kill not the not their high priest the high priest had no authority to kill a person or give a final verdict of death unless he is proven criminal or a sinner according to the law. And that is why they, were, they brought him in front of Pilate, the Roman rulers. They knew very well, Rome is uh, so fond of killing people on the cross. Therefore they demanded, crucify him, crucify him. It was not Jewish way of doing it was the Roman way of doing. But Jesus already told them. 
his disciples that I will be lifted up. Son of man will die on a cross which his disciples could not digest. They didn't understand. Today we have a beautiful picture on this side of the cross. Now we know what I'm talking about. The very reason you and me are gathered here this morning is because of his death on the cross. And the first century Christians, after the death of Jesus, though they ran away from him, the disciples, they ran away from him. There was no, none to help him. There was none even to carry his cross. Such a heavy cross he had to carry all the way alone. But in between comes the Simon the Cyrene, a, a common laborer, a worker in the field. He came and helped Jesus to carry the cross to uh, I mean, the, on the Calvary. None of his disciples were around. None of them were willing to come close to him. And would say that Lord. You have fed me last three and a half years. You have taught me so much. Let me carry your cross. There was not even a single one. Let me tell you my dear brothers and sisters. You think that people are close to you. When they smile at you. You think that they gave, give your heart. They hurt to you. No. When, when, when rubber hits the road. When it comes to a real situation. They will all abandon you. They will all abandon you. And there will be only one. Who can go with you. Who can walk with you. Who can climb with you. Any mountain. Any mountain. It is my Lord. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is the reason I worship him. That is the reason I preach him. That's the reason I, I praise him. Hallelujah. I believe. Each one of us are here. Not because of any human beings. But because of the cross hallelujah because of Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary praise God hallelujah there was none to help him there was no one to help him at that point and then we understand that Jesus carried his cross or Jesus uh, had to die on the cross so today we have a beautiful picture and the first century Christians I mean, apostles, the, the message of the first century church was Christ crucified. Nothing else. They didn't preach about much of the Old Testament. They had only one subject to preach. It was Christ who was crucified. I believe even the New Testament church has only one message. We don't have many other messages. The message is Jesus who died on the cross. Praise God. Even this morning, that is the most significant message. Anyone and everyone should be preaching. Does not mean that we should not preach from the Old Testament. It does not mean that we should not, you know, look at the Old Testament or read other books. No, no, no. But the culmination of even the Old Testament, everything comes in that one person. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are in his presence this morning. So we have a beautiful picture. And uh, then Apostle Peter says. You crucified this Christ. This Jesus. In whose name we stand. He was so bold. In, he was very much bold. He was bold enough to stand and proclaim. That message to the first century gathering. Because of the anointing that was upon him. Then we understand. More theology of the cross is revealed and given to us in a very clear and vivid picture by Apostle Paul. What do Paul say? Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 23. 1 Corinthians 1 23. He says, I preach Christ crucified. And then we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2. 1 Corinthians 2 2. He says, I want to be among you, knowing nothing but only Christ who is crucified. These statements are, you know, I believe it has so much of weight in itself. Paul says, I preach Christ crucified. And then he says, I want to be among you, knowing nothing, knowing nothing. I don't want to know anything about this world. I don't want to know any, what is happening today. 
But I want to know. I want to serve you. I'm being among you. Knowing nothing. But only know Jesus. Hallelujah. Then he says. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, he says, I should glory on the cross of Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I don't know how many of you confess that statement every day. Would you say this morning, I, I want to be or the Lord, let the Lord be glorified in my life. I want to glory in the cross of Christ. And knowing nothing, only about the cross. And because by which I am crucified to the world, the world has been crucified to me. It is all because of the cross. That's why you and me are reminded time and again that we do not belong to this world. Because of the cross. We do not belong to this world. We belong to another world. Hallelujah. We belong to where we want to go and be there. Where Jesus is. And the Father God is. Hallelujah. Where all the angels are. Where all the saints of God who walked ahead of me are being with. Hallelujah. I want to be there. Praise God. I hope and pray that that is our earning desire. That is our craving desire. Not for the things of this world. But for the things of the kingdom. Hallelujah. That, is, that was these emphatic statements were in the writings of apostles. Paul, James and uh, you know John. We see all this come together in Revelation. And in the Revelation, uh, I mean Apostle John talks about it. The cross brought resurrection. The cross brought new life. And you and me are waiting for it. We know we will die once. And we will be buried. But from there we will rise again. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. Hallelujah. And our bodies will be transformed. Our souls will be, will be you know, it is transformed into a new being. A heavenly body. And we will be resurrected. So the culmination of the resurrection. The perfection of the resurrection. The fulfillment of the resurrection. Hallelujah. The, the, the top, top form of the resurrection. Is seen in the book of Revelation. It is all because of the cross. And then when we come to this passage. I just want to highlight that. So now we know this side. What is this side of the cross? Why are we here today? What kind of songs that we sing? We sing Christ crucified, right? We proclaim, we even when we say that I love Jesus, I say that I love Jesus who died on the cross. Yes, Jesus is the king of glory. But at the same time, I can picture very well, picturize that, hallelujah, that figure of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. And therefore I praise him. Therefore I worship him. Therefore I preach him. Therefore I testify him. Therefore I, hallelujah, I'm excited when I come to the presence of God. I believe each one of us come to that level of understanding. Knowing nothing but on the cross. Praise God. And that is this side of the cross. But on the other side of the cross. Jesus is talking to the disciples. What is he trying to say? Read that passage again, please. From John chapter 14, verse 28. You have heard me say to you, I am going away. And he says, I am going away. I am going away. Yeah. And coming back to you. I am coming back to you. If you have loved me. Yes. You will rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. Jesus is making some statements which the disciples fail to understand. He is trying to tell them. I told you earlier. He said I will be lifted up. Not the Jewish way of expectation. In a different way. And. Now Jesus tells them. That I am going away. They didn't want him to go away. But he also said. I am coming back to you. He is not talking about. The second coming. He is talking about. I am going away. I will die on the cross. I am coming back to you. On the third day morning. 
I will meet with you. Praise God. I don't know whether the disciples got that picture. They didn't get the picture. Today we can, we will. We know because it is very clear in the scriptures. And very clear in the preaching of the apostles. Therefore we have no problem of understanding gosh. We have no problem of what Jesus is trying to say. Uh, we can easily understand. But the disciples did not. And then he says. If you loved me. You would have rejoiced because I am going back to the father. He said I will come back to you. Again I go back to my father. And I want you to. Not sit with a long face. I want you to, I want you to rejoice. He is saying to the disciples, they are in a big distress now, they are in trouble, they are in problem. Because for several weeks he has been telling that he is going away, going away, going away. Right? And now, they, they, they are in a kind of sad mood. They, are, they can't rejoice at this word. But Jesus says, because I am going away, you need to rejoice. Praise God. Rejoice because of the cross. I know, today we have come to the Lord's table. Lord's table for many of us, it is a time of, yeah, crying and, uh, you know, running nose and, yeah. There is nothing wrong in that because we, we, we look at the suffering of Christ. But more than that, in the words of Jesus... This is something for us to rejoice. Jesus tells his disciples, I am going away. I will come back to you. You rejoice. Do not be sad because I am going away. Praise God. Do not be sad because Jesus is dead. If he is dead, he is alive. He came back on the third day morning. He is alive this morning. And even us, you and me come together to celebrate this very holy communion. You know why we celebrate it? Because of the cross. Because of the cross. Hallelujah. You come together and partake from this Lord's table with reverence. Hallelujah. Therefore, because we proclaim to the world, yes, Jesus suffered and died on the cross of Calvary. He will come again to partake with us together. Hallelujah. With the holy church of God. And then he said. That. So therefore we need to rejoice. Then he says. The father is greater than I. I have told you now. Before it happens. So that when it does take place. You may believe. And have faith in me. He's telling the disciples. Disciples. You need to know. This will take place. But when this take place. Do not be sad. Do not run away stay back focus on to this cross because you know what it is a proof that you have faith in me this is where disciples failed they didn't believe many of them could not even believe that Jesus will be risen on the third day we have heard from number of occasions from that passage None of the disciples were there at early in the morning on the, in, the, on, I mean, in front of the tomb. They were afraid of the Roman kingdom. They ran away. They didn't want to go and check whether what Jesus said is right or wrong. It was Mary Magdalene. The other Mary, they all went to see. They, were, they, they took some incense to put on the body on Jesus of Jesus. Then they have realized he is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. And then, hallelujah, the angels told them, go and tell to my disciples. Jesus said them in one occasion, go and tell them that I am risen. The disciples did not have faith. Though Jesus warned them earlier, you need to exercise your faith. This morning the Holy Spirit tells us, exercise your faith. Not because we see something, we worship him. Because I believe he died on the cross of Calvary. And he is back on the third day. He came back. And in the same way as he went up on the sky. He will come back again. To receive the church of God. That's why I worship him. That's why. Hallelujah. I'm excited. That's why. I'm in the presence of God. With such a great joy. And happiness. Because. Hallelujah. My God. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. One more thing. Jesus says. He told them. He told them 
I have told, okay, in verse 30, I will not speak with you much longer. For the ruler of the world is coming. And he has no claim on me. Nor anything that he can use to, against me. But so that the world may know that I love the Father. I do exactly as the Father had commanded me to do. That is the cross. Cross is not a punishment for Jesus by Satan. Jesus very clearly puts it. The ruler of the world is coming. Satan is coming. My enemy is coming. Enemy of the kingdom is coming. Yes. He may take hold of me. He can spit on my face. He can put a crown, on, a crown of thorn on me. And he may crush me. But he will never win the battle. Ultimate victory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. The powers, strong powers of darkness were so rejoicing and happy that they, they were able to put Jesus on the cross. But Jesus said, it is because my father had commanded me. Yes, even death on the cross was completely in the larger story of God the father. And then you see, I do exactly what the father tells me to do. A complete commitment before the words of the father. This is what they have communicated in the garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus alone talking to his father. We see the agony of Christ in the garden of Gethsemane. He prayed, father, if you can, please take this cup away from me. But not my will, but let thy be done. This morning, dear brothers and sisters, that is not just the prayer of Jesus. Even this morning, you and me need to pray that prayer. Lord, not my will, let thy be done in my life. Hallelujah. And he says, Father had commanded me to die on the cross. And I did exactly as the Father tells me to do. You know why? Just to prove that I love him. Yes, that is the point. I love the Father. Praise God. This morning, I love the Father. That's why he died on the cross. Because Father loved each one of us. Thereby God, John chapter 3 verse 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only one and begotten son. Who believes in him shall not perish but will have everlasting life. God the Father loved us. God the Son loved us. God the Holy Spirit loved us. Therefore we are God's people. A community of redeemed believers. Praising and worshipping the Lord. This morning our focus is on the cross. The cross is old. The cross is a rugged cross. The cross is on the, on the hill. Hallelujah. It's a hill far away. There stood an old rugged cross. But your focus is on the cross. Because that is where you see the truest form of demonstration of God's love. God the Father demonstrated his love on that cross. Leaving his son, letting his son to die. Because to prove to the world that not the enemy is taken victory. Rather to prove that he loves the Father. Hallelujah. And God loves us. I want you to have only one focus in your heart this morning. Cross. Cross of Christ. A symbol of love. It's not a symbol of suffering and shame. Yes, it is a symbol of suffering. But it is for us it is not a symbol of shame. Rather, it's a symbol of joy. It's a symbol of rejoicing. It's a symbol of love. It's a symbol of humility. It's a symbol of hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The, the extreme form of love. On the cross of Calvary.